And now I'm going to like to uh, answer all the questions. I think Dr. Kozlowski will coordinate question and answers. So, Uyen, go back to the yes. slide number 15. Sorry. So, yes, I think that now is time open for, for so questions. I have only one question. Probably I will start. Go to slide number 51. It is 45, 51. Okay. 51. Okay, when you use a doctor, you use first name or last name after doctor? Last name. So, Dr. Thompson is his last name. You are writing Dr. Lee. Please be careful when you write these things, okay? Okay, I'm sorry. Okay. Okay, I will, I think, give time to others. Then I will ask you a few questions. Okay, so I have a general question. I'm always asked the same question. So, can you briefly describe the role of the transition metals in the cross-coupling reactions? And uh, I ask the same question other students of Dr. Handa, if there is a possible to use less expensive transition metals. So, uh, in the cross-couplings, she presented last two, three slides. I think uh, those were less expensive, but we have a patent pending. So, we didn't disclose what are those metals. Okay. So, that's a so, pretty so much... So, I understand, I understand that is the top secret, right? That, that's a pretty much top secret. And I would say these students are pretty lucky. They got, uh, you know, pretty good hit and then also the reaction time is pretty less. So, I would say Uyen is pretty lucky for himself okay. but in terms of that project. But without, without going to any, any details, well, can you, can you tell us why, why we use such expensive metals if we, for example, discuss Suzuki cross-coupling? That's not so, a big So, uh, the thing is, Typically, you have to go through, it is two electron system. So, going from palladium 0 to palladium 2 cycle. So, the oxidation potential of palladium 0 to palladium 2 is pretty less. I mean, less amount of energy is required. But in case of going from copper 1 to copper 3, which is also another route for cross coupling reactions. So, it's a uphill, pretty much uphill, copper 1 to copper 3. So, that's why other transition metals uh, metals in Suzuki cross couplings so far is impossible, I would say. Uh, okay. The only thing is you can combine different metals which can actually assist the oxidation uh, uh, of uh, another metal. So, that's the concept we used in the multi-metallic nanoparticles. Okay. I think you went to answer the, the questions. Oh, I thought he asked me. Okay. That, that's okay. That's okay. Other questions coming from the audience? Uh, this is Dr. Maurer. I was uh, interested you had, uh, when you were at Systems, you talked about the LED, the blue and the, and the white, but then you made a point of telling us that it worked most effectively at a pH of 8 to 9. Could you ex explain why that is the case? Yeah. So let me go back to the oxidation. So you uh, so uh, it working, so the pH of our surfactant is about 45. And then when we check the oxidation of um, the reaction, it work, uh, it workable. However, when we adjust the pH uh, to the basic condition, we observe the reaction is much far faster. It is original. It or, original is were, uh, about 24 hours, but in the when we adjust the pH uh, using sodium carbonate as base, we observe the reaction time is less. Um, is a so Ian, the yes. question Dr. Morrow asked is the reason why. Go to the yeah. name and yeah. explain why it is, okay? Yeah, sure. So yeah. You, you you can see here, in this first step, you uh, you need a base we to... We don't see your cursor. We don't see your cursor. Oh, sorry. 
we put on the laser pool. Yeah. So Dr. Mao, uh, if you see this step, uh, we need a base to uh, pick the proton for the formation of the uh, uh, benzylic oxide copper. So, so the base is uh, so the base in is important in this step. Without the base, uh, the this step will not happen. But however, this copper two or HBC can act as internal base. For the brave, for the brave free condition to pick this proton. Did I answer your question, Dr. Mahler? Okay, that's that, that becoming clearer. Yes, thank you. Okay, one more question, Uyen. You pointed out this step. What about beta hydrogen elimination? Do you think? Yeah, yes, that's the step too. Yeah. Um, okay. Good. Uh, yeah, I, I have a sort of very basic question. Um, yes. um, I noticed at the beginning you were using solvents like uh, DMF and uh, these are all quite polar solvents, right? Yes. Okay, so I, I think yeah, water is a polar solvent and you want to do these reactions in water. So if I just threw the reagents into water without any of the micelles, why would this reaction not, not work? Well, why would the reactions you showed us not work? Well, weak reaction you want to uh, ask like the oxidation of anchor to the aldehyde or the carbene. Uh. Uh, for example, if you go back to the very beginning of your uh, slides, or slide probably three or four. Sure. Uh, it's, it's a general, it's just a basic general question. Yes, yes, I understand. So, so uh, any, any reaction, he's asking any reaction. So you talked about DMF people use DMF for reactions and your water is also polar, DMF is polar. Why reactions don't work in neat water? Why you need surfactant? That's his question. The first thing is for the most case, the substrate and the catalyst is not soluble in water. So when it's not soluble in water, it's difficult to uh, obtain the desired product because the interaction between the uh, substrate and catalyst is less. And then the second thing is, for example, this intermediate like carbon and the carbon ion intermediate, carb, especially carbon intermediate is not sta stable in the water. It decom yeah, it. So technically you are doing the water sensitive chemistry in water, right? Yes. So okay. what is the difference between uh, water and uh, as Professor Thompson pointed out, water is polar and DMF is polar. What is the basic difference between these two solvents? There are two types of dipolar solvents. What are those two types of dipolar solvents? One is a uh, uh, polar aprotic solvent and one is a uh, uh, polar protic solvent. Which one is polar protic? Which one is polar aprotic? Polar a protect there's like a DMF uh, and uh, one for the oxygen. There's no hydrogen um, um, hydrogen attached to the oxygen. Okay. Okay. So is is that so? That's kind of exactly what I was really wondering. Is is the uh, lack of reactivity in water the fact that it's a polar protic solvent and it forms this hydrogen bond shell uh, that reduces reactivity or is it because as you're mentioning the lack of um, solvation in water the solvation in water okay so it's nothing to do with say the hydrogen bond structure kind of uh, the hydrogen bonding um, inhibits reactivity in by some mechanism the so one thing, Uyen, you have a, a starting material alcohol. Yes. And then you have a, a DMF, let's say dipolar aprotic solvent. Does uh, any sort of hydrogen bond shell exist in that case or not? Yes, there's a hydrogen bond exists. So answer the question what Dr. Thompson asked then. Yes, yeah, so uh, so there's hydrogen bond uh, between the alcohol with the water. So it 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 could be um, 
due to the hydrogen bond between the uh, the uh, the substrate in the uh, the uh, protic solvent, it could inhibit the reaction. Okay, and and I guess I had a kind of a follow up question. So you mentioned about this. Um, uh, micelle or surfactant that you designed early on in the talk uh, where you kind of wanted to integrate essentially um, sort of the D or the form amide or the DMF kind of part into the micelle. Maybe if you go to slide eight or, or you know, a bit, bit bit earlier. Yeah, is this PS? Yeah, this one. No, no, no. Previous. Yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. So, um, Essentially, I was just wondering, what's the role of the uh, solvent that you need to integrate it into the micelle? So I, I'm imagining the whole point of the micelle is that it's just a uh, micro reactor, if you like, where everything's very concentrated. Yeah. Okay. So there, you can imagine if I create any bubble, so long as I can put stuff in that bubble, I'm going to have a, a high reaction rate. So why would I want to integrate um, this DMF backbone into my micelle? What does that achieve? So, um, so what if you remove uh, this uh, tertiary amide group from the micelle? What will happen? So to this, this are uh, this tertiary amide group increase the uh, the um, the polar the polarity of the um. um If we remove this group, the uh, so why why you need DMF for reactions? What DMF does when you do reactions in DMF? What it does? It dissolves the uh, the sub uh, substrate and the catalyst. And then what if you remove that from empty file, the tertiary amide group? What will happen? The dissolving uh, will be uh, de decrease. It will de de decrease the dissolve. Uh, so the micelle, you have multiple tertiary amide or just one or two? You have multiple because it's not one micelle, it, it, it different, it does many micelle. Micelle or amplifies? Yes, micelle. In one micelle, you have many micelle, you mean? No, in one micelle have one tertiary amide, but we have dip, like we have many different the micelle really? in the solution, oh. in the solution. In one micelle, no, I'm asking you, I'm following up with Dr. Thompson's questions. In one micelle, you have only one amplifier or many? We look, at, look at no, this. No, we could have one, but could have more than one. In the one, two, ten or multiple? More than ten or less than ten, let's see. So you are saying it's a 200 nanometer average size. How many you have then? More than 10 or less than 10? If you want to guess based on the size. It's uh, more than 10. Okay. Now answer Dr. Thompson's questions. Why you need this tertiary amide in the micelle? So because we have the... Um, multiple the amide group on the uh, in the micelle it will increase the uh, the uh, soluble uh, the the increase the uh, um like we can the increase the uh, the the dissol uh, solution of the uh, catalyst and the uh, solubility yeah solubility of the uh, subject in the uh, in the uh, micelle. Okay, so it's just about making sure that your reagents go inside the micelle, that they, uh, there's not some sort of um, equilibrium between them being inside or outside or something like that. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So I have, I have sort of a follow-up question. So we know that the uh, dielectric constant of water is what, 70 or 80, something like that, right? Yeah. And 
uh, maybe that's the one of the reasons that you would like to use a uh, different solvent basically to go to uh, some, you know, solvents, they have much lower dielectric constant. Um, can you comment on this, if that's, that's the case or not really? Can you um, can you uh, explain the question again? I I'm asking uh, that if we if we take into consideration dielectric constant of okay. the water, yes, it's very high. Yes, because it's about I believe it's about eight seventy or eighty. I don't remember really. Seven. But you know, if we take for example any protein is much lower, it's about what, 4 or 15, that's what people argue. Mm. So maybe one of the reasons why you would like to change essentially solvent is because you would like to lower dielectric constant. Exactly. Yes. That's, 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 you know, my question formulated in a different way. So yes. he answered your question already. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I have a, we have a few questions, okay? Uh, yes. Go to slide number 23. 23. This is 26. Okay. I just... One more. Uh, yeah. What is the unit of E factor? The unit could to be in milligram. Really? So because you said in milligram uh, in uh, what uh, uh, deno you are you are talking? Uh, there's no units because because the uh, there's no <laughs> unit on the E factor. I'm sorry. Okay. So uh, the waste uh, it must not be milligram. It can be anything. Okay. Yes. But it in this study. Milligram. Yeah, but you should not mislead. You should tell the audience it can be in kilo, it can be in metric ton, as long as your top and bottom, you keep it consistent with the waste and product. Yes. The unit must be same on both top and bottom sides. Yes. Okay. Now go to slide number 26. You said when, if I'm right, okay, you said when you add uh, uh, nanoparticles in uh, surfactant, the yes. size uh, decreases. You spoke it increases, decreases. but you spoke decreases. I, I, I could make okay. I'm sorry. Oh, slide yeah, number 26. Oh, this is 26, 28. This is the question I would ask why? So, you suddenly changed from a uh, lithium T oxide to lithium hydroxide. What is the rationale on? Why you change? Why you think lithium hydroxide is better? So uh, in solution, the uh, lithium uh, tertiary butyl uh, oxide in the equilibrium with the lithium hydroxide and tertiary butyl. Uh, butyl. Okay. Which, butanol. which solution? Uh, water. In water. Oh, it was okay. So which means uh, you think like uh, when you have uh, lithium hydroxide, lithium has some specific role. Yes. What is what is that role? What do you think? This is the probably most challenging questions to you. Why do you think lithium is better than sodium and potassium? Ask yourself the answer. So, lithium is uh, playing a role in your top reaction you are showing to generate this uh, A9 and A9. So, tell me what, what is that role? Why do you think lithium is better? I wish I have a chalkboard and you should draw the structure. Huh? I mean, you change lithium to sodium, it doesn't work. Yes. Why? Lithium is... Um
But lithium is act as a base to proton with the hydrogen from the end. Why, why, why sodium hydroxide doesn't work? Sodium hydroxide is base also. It means lithium is having some role. When you change lithium, uh, you showed us in the optimization. When you use sodium carbonate or other, it doesn't work. Very yes. Good. Yeah. Then it means uh, when you change the lithium to sodium hydroxide, it doesn't work that well. What is the role of lithium? What is special about lithium? It have to have special role on the lithium. Do you, you think yeah. about what is that role? Okay, um, I would still give you probably 20 minutes or 10 minutes when we will discuss in committee. You when you come back, give us answer. What is the role of lithium? Okay. okay. Any other question? I think I am done with that. Yes. Any other questions from uh, students or from audience from committee? Uh, this is Dr. Maurer again. Uh, you you were able to show us um, uh, changes with the dynamic light scattering with the uh, the sizes. Uh, are you able to correlate that also with any of your microscopy experiments? My um, you, you see the increases in 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 the size. Yes, we yeah. TM, can you also observe those? Yeah, I. Can you? I think Dr. Maurer is asking, can you do, can you see my cell under HRT, EM or SCM? No, we cannot see that because... Why? You showed us my cells in one slide. What was that experiment? No, no. You showed us a... Oh, the cryo oh. TM. Yes, we could observe that. Yeah, but uh, why you can't observe in a TEM or HRTEM? Why you need cryo TEM? Um. What is special about my cells? I mean, uh, uh, are these my cells static or dynamic? Dynamic. When you increase the temperature, what happens? The dynamic nature, dynamicity. Will increase. Will increase. So they, that's why you need low temperature, right? Yes. Yes. Now, tell, uh, give us the answer. What Dr. Model asked? Can you see under microscope also? Yes, we could see that because under microscope we don't uh, we don't uh, apply the heat on the uh, the uh, my cell. So you can do cryo TEM, right? Yes. Why you didn't do in this case then? The microscopy. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, cryo TEM. Uh, you did DLS. Why you didn't do cryo TEM? Uh, adding uh, uh, catalyst first, then go okay. for. Why you didn't do that? Because the micelle is dynamic. It is not. It like it. When we do cryo TEM, we have to freeze it in a, in order to uh, to do the cryo TEM. So from yeah, yeah, from microscopic. Huh? Then why you didn't do that? For the microscopic. Yeah, the experiment cryo TEM. Uh, whatever you are seeing in dynamic light scattering experiments why you didn't do the cryo tem same way you take the uh, equus ps 750m add catalyst stir it and then check the uh, cryo tem whether you see the same trend in cryo tem or not why you didn't do that do we have at ufl cryo tem no, we don't have. Okay. So that's the probably answer. <laughs> it's pretty difficult yeah. to take Find time. Maybe. <laughs> Find a place to go. Yeah, this could be done, Uyen, with cryo time. 
Okay. You should think about it. It's a very good question, actually. Yes, yeah. Well, any more questions? Well, if not, I will ask that uh, everybody sign off except uh, the committee. And so we'll go on. Stay I'll for discussion. Okay. Uh, if the other faculty would like to stay for discussion, they are more than welcome. So I thought that Dr. Morris should stay also. I would like her also. Oh, yeah, you should go. I will uh, text or email you. Uh, you can come.